Welcome back. It's Jeff Frick with Silicon Angle, where we go out to the events, uh, extract the signal from the noise, find the smartest people we can talk to, ask them the questions that you wish that you could ask them so we can get you the information. So we are at an accelerator in Mountain View, California. Again, we're here for the launch of their new enterprise platform launch. And we've talked to a bunch of people from Accelerator, but it's always good to talk to customers and partners to get the, you know, kind of get the real story. So I'm here with Samvit Reina from Popcorn Apps. He's a CEO and founder, obviously a partner of Accelerator. So welcome to theCUBE. Tell us a little bit about why this announcement today uh, is, is important. This is a big announcement, uh, both for Absolute and, and their partners. So for, for us, it is, uh, you know, they're talking about all the new product features and all the capabilities that the product has, and we are the guys who are using it, and we are the we are guys who are using it to realize both our vision and the vision of our customers. So if we are working with CIOs or business leaders on their mobile strategy and executing that strategy with one app, two apps, and in, in most cases, it's a multitude of apps, which, which really translates into about the first app is done. That's where you know this platform comes into play in a in a, in a really big way. Multiple roles, multiple people that uh, that use this platform, and uh, they really are enabling uh, essentially a mobile story that's a mobile first story. So why is the accelerator platform um, as as a methodology for building these apps better than the alternatives. Sure, it's the, it's the only what I would call a full service platform. What I mean by that is it's got core components of four main things, right? So it it does cross platform applications. So people these days are not really saying that I'll do only an Apple or iPhone app. I'll do an Android as well. I'll do tablets as well and multilingual, multi currency. So so it's a, it's all of a sudden a, a cross platform that is much beyond what what people have seen before. Right. Second thing is it provides the capability for various roles of the organization. So a QA manager can go in and look at the test cycles that uh, that have run for these apps that that his team or her team is testing. Third thing, it provides the analytics that are very very crucial uh, to to any kind of app. Right. It may be a customer facing app where you may see the analytics and the customer profiling and the segmentation of that customer, and then figure out what's the right way to target this customer with new campaigns, for example. So analytics is really, really big. And the fourth thing is really around the dashboard. So dashboard is the real view into what is going on with my enterprise apps at any given time. Whether these apps are customer facing or they're employee facing, it really doesn't matter. It gives me a pinpointed information of real time information as to what's going on with, with the users of these apps. So at SiliconANGLE, we're very interested in, in enterprise. We talked to a lot of CIOs and, and, and obviously we're we we see how this kind of consumerization of of enterprise IT is happening, but you know, cute name, popcorn apps. What, I got to ask you, what's the story with popcorn apps, and how does somebody with a CIO of popcorn apps get into uh, to big enterprises and sell telco deals? <laughs> <laughs> popcorn apps is a is a long story, probably probably longer <laughs> than the time you have right yeah, now. But one of one of the first uh, first apps that we built was for a movie house, and and you know, popcorn was an app name, and it turned out that very easy to get a domain name. <laughs> So, so essentially, we named it Popcorn Apps. But no, all, all seriousness, we've uh, we've actually been in front of boards where executive teams are actually discussing their mobile strategy, and we are providing valuable input into that mobile strategy. Sure. And and these are apps both for internal use, for for their employees, and for their customer facing. So truly enhancing business value for their enterprise and for their businesses. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's funny to tease. Anyone who's ever done a startup knows that the most difficult part is trying to find an available URL. <laughs> so whatever strategy you had on your naming convention, you throw it out the window and you, you make it work. No, that's great. So you're out in the field. You've got a number of, of verticals that you guys special in, specialize in. Who would you see f from an industry point of view are kind of the leaders right now in adopting and, and the transformative power of leveraging mobile? Sure. Uh, retail companies are, are going big. Uh, in in terms of using the mobile for for really getting out shopping in their in the customers' hands, uh, travel companies. So all the airlines, all the hotel, all the travel agencies are are going going big big as well. They they are probably on their second or third rendition of the app uh, that that they've, they've launched, and uh, they're al also using it internally for their employees and their field force. And the telecom operators basically believe that. They, they are the ones who are providing this technology in the palm of the consumer's hands, and they really have to use this to leverage their own 
uh, sort of data infrastructure, their own voice infrastructure to provide the, the, the value uh, that the consumer has. So, so really all about their applications and their applications enabling their enterprise customers. So, so field force applications and the likes of AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile are, are really pushing these out to, uh, to a variety of different customer bases. So which, which begs the question, who are the laggards? Who are the ones that are, you know, just either still can't get over the hump or just on the edge of thinking about it? You know, the laggards are, I, I wouldn't call them laggards, but they, there are reasons for, for why they're laggards. They're, they're either worried about security or regulatory information. So there are a lot of, while there are a lot of pharma companies who are, who are embracing mobility, there are a lot of companies who are basically looking at regulatory restrictions on what can be stored, what can be kept on a mobile device. Now, you could have apps that, that have a beautiful UI, beautiful look and feel, and transact very well, and really don't store anything on the device itself and mm -hmm. provide that security for transactions. So I think slowly but surely, pretty much everyone is going to embrace this, and, uh, and security kind of things will, will sort of die down in terms of concern. Regulatory pressure will, will, will ease up as well. Yeah. Samba, thanks very much for coming on. Pop popcorn apps. So again, th that's an interesting uh, angle there at the end where you can get around maybe some of the regulatory issues with data by really having the app exist on the mobile device and not necessarily the data. Um, so some great insight. Because again, that's what we'd like to give you. We'd like to go out and get you the insight. So again, Jeff Frick from SiliconANGLE reporting live from Accelerator, Mountain View, California, really covering their big announcement today, which is the launch of their enterprise platform. So thanks again for uh, coming on theCUBE. Again, you can always see us at siliconangle.com or wikibon.org. Jeff Frick signing off from Mountain View.